Hey everybody, it's Rob here. We finally have a viable no Uber whirlwind bar. We made a couple changes here and there are cool changes such as the anger management and changes to the Tusk Helm coming into the game, which allows us to play our favorite build, the whirlwind bar, without any Uber uniques and it's still insanely good. So we switched to Rails Might. Um, for Whirlwind Grasping Vein, which is uh, pulling now very frequently, we switched Starless Sky to Starlight, which gives us an insane synergy and gives us a lot of primary resources every time we heal. And we heal a lot with Iron Skin and our shots. We switched Grandfather to the now buffed Dust Devil aspect here on a pole arm, which also got another buff for the Executioner Glyph that now gives us a 1.15x, another 5% damage buff. And we switched the Harlequin's Crest out for a Tusk Helm, um, which has an insane good synergy. You guys can see it's active all the time with my Berserking. Insane good synergy with the new Anger Management um, aspect here. So this is finally a very, very viable setup and probably one of the best builds to start Season 5 with. I'm going to show you some gameplay and we're going to talk about the setups. But yeah, Spin to Win is strong, my friends, for Season 5. Log in. Quick edit here. After recent news, there are some nerfs coming to the key passives of the barb, such as Gushing Wounds. However, I still believe the Whirlwind Barb, in particular for Season 5, and the leveling process will still be a very, very viable build, especially with some of the other buffs and some of the unique reworks that we are getting. Um, especially in the leveling process, it's going to be very, very strong. Okay, no Uber, Whirlwind Barb. Chop, chop. Executioner and Coda. And good Executioner sounds. Chop, chop. How did that guy heal in the back? What happened there? They definitely have less AoE coverage because no two rails. Been trying a few setups, but the Starlight seems the best to make up for the resource lost from the Starless guy. That one is down. Get them all. The pulling is also really cool. Get them all together like this. Certainly cool for group play too. Where are we gonna put two rails might higher in the priority? Especially over Grandfather now with the executioner buffs. Those feel really good. And the frequency of the pull is good too. We're singing, we're shouting, dude. Shout only, Bob. R2628 punch. Thanks, man. Let's go. Chop, chop. Can't hide from me, man. They can't hide from me. So the boss HP is still a little bit uh, on the buggy side. Let's see now. Basically just spinning in the hitbox. I need that. There's a fly here in my room. Get out of here. Boom. Cheers. <laughs> Call of the engines. Hell yeah. The definite true else my is a little bit missed um, in terms of AoE clear. But with the pulling. And we also have a big life pool now that we changed into. I guess we lost a bit of damage reduction, but Tusk Helm is great. And keep in mind, guys, they might buff this. So we have, when we're buffed, 82k life. 
And I think there's a good chance that they're gonna buff all the... I mean, they already confirmed it, basically, that they're gonna buff all these uniques. Such as Tuskel. So that one's gonna get even better. I think we need to clear this here. Or we're gonna run out. Called it. Just like we call these engines. Yeah, they melt fast, that's for sure. I like how many twisters we spawn now. Because we generate and spend a lot more fury. Up drop. A vulnerable cap is now 350 in the new patch. This is with all the nerfs to bleed, and it's still uh, very strong. It's just so smooth spawning these engines while you spin. It doesn't interrupt you. That just what feels pretty good. Like the spin. Give the win. Boom. Thanks for the prime. Welcome in, welcome in. Tech. So we just gotta wait one second here for this guy. Probably not to use the engines like at the very end. So it would even go like 25% faster without those engines. But yeah. The bosses, they melt. They seriously melt. It's a ton of good setup. So we are rocking no uber unique, not a single one, or like how you'd call it now, mythic. So we are rocking the task helm here. And this one, good chance for it to be buffed. Plus six to aggressive resistance. This one actually gives you more toughness than a shako. Especially when combined with anger management, we have the Berserk up all the time. If you still also have Fury issues, you can put more points into Prolific Fury. But I felt like that wasn't even necessary. But you certainly can uh, shift them from Slaying Strike or something into Prolific Fury to be a bit more on the more... Uh, especially if you have uh, resource issues. But Aggressive Resistance is giving you, if you have it um, maxed here, it would give you 44% uh, resistance, 44% uh, flat damage reduction. It stacks additively, so that's extremely good. And the Tusk Helm, to, to, combined with Anger Management, you guys see this red stuff, it's always up. So even if I would unequip this, equip a Shako or something, like watch our cooldown go down, and then re-equip this, boom, you see, you hear it, boom, the pro like it instantly procs again. Uh, then instead of two red elves, we are just playing the Gasping Whirlwind. You can also play a defensive aspect. There's a couple good ones if you feel like you need toughness. But I definitely recommend is getting all res here to just get your all res up. I have two all res rolls now uh, because the Starter Sky usually gives a lot of all res, while a normal ring does not do that. Um, so we just uh, picked up one more all res roll. So we have all res here on the on the pan on the pants and on the chest. Then we have the new aspect, anger management, pretty easy, straightforward, uh, perma berserking. Really cool, just like, it's gonna look like this on the bar. Extremely, extremely good. Then we have Iron Warrior with Iron Skin. We have a bunch of health generation here with our Starlight Aspect. And this one basically gives us resources whenever we... Uh, it gives us primary resource whenever we heal. And we're gonna be healing quite a lot uh, with Iron Skin 10%. And then also with the Raid Leader 2% per shot. That's another 6% per second. Um, pretty potent here, and you're gonna get a lot of resources, so you can just keep spinning. We still use a uh, Fury on Kill on the May, so that's also very good. You can even have a non-greater uh, affix, it's gonna be fine. Uh, we have Ghost Walker here, movement speed, also Iron Skin also makes it unstoppable. With the Iron Warrior, so big movement speed. Berserk Ripping, um, Devilish, Fierce Winds of course, and all crit everywhere. You can finally roll this, you don't need a rogue, you can just roll it normally. Um, we have crit damage, and I have like overkill vulnerable. I have like way too much vulnerable damage, uh, but 
again, this can be optimized a lot. I also have flay duration here. You obviously don't want that. You would want another chance uh, of Dust Devils to spawn and then master work the crit damage. I'm going to have that in the planner. In fact, I think it's already in here. Like the planner is already up here. No Uber is going to link that in the description. Um, yeah, then we have the Starlight aspect instead of Starlight Sky. This one solves our resource issues. And then normally both Chieftain and then here Elements on the Amulet. Uh, normally we're playing X Expertise. We select um, our Polearm here on Whirlwind. So we get all the benefits. We're getting, with Polearm Expertise, we're getting a 1.15x versus Healthy. And we also have at the very end here the Executioner Glyph for another 1.15x. That's pretty strong. And then the skill trees look like this. So just two points in Whirlwind. You can also play the Bleeding Rune if you want, but it's not really necessary. Pressure point and then just like defensive, short support, <laughs> iron skin. You can he keep hearing my uh, helm procking. And then movement speed. You can do prolific fury or slaying strike depending on what you want. These are like exchangeable. But always like this, always three in aggressive resistance, always three in pit fighter, always three cut to the bone, always three in counter offensive, in heavy handed. Oh, and I actually still had wallop. Obviously, you're not playing a maze. So uh, you can shift them to this. <laughs> See, I was even like missing some uh, resources. So we just want heavy handed because obviously we're not using a mace. And then we have Call of the Ancients with three points in here. They buff this to 25% X, really good. You also get more fury even because a lot of people struggle with fury on single target. So you get even more fury and then obviously gushing wounds. And we also use fury generation here, fury per second six. Uh, we lose two, but this two is already negated by the Tusk Helm effect. So these two are a very strong combination and then you can still get more fury and like I, I even think like if we're not even hitting a target see like our fury is still on, on a pretty decent side right you guys can see how it just keeps going up with the starlight aspect and also like just procs more stuff so that is extremely good combination and then you yeah, obviously x expertise polar normally and paragon trees looking like this uh, the planner is a bit more optimized because in game i didn't fully respect we have exploit uh, ira we have all the life nodes here we are but generally very tanky still we have Might, we have Wrath, we have Hemorrhage, we have Tenacity. Uh, we have, uh, and you want 300 Berserking damage here for Blood Rage. If you don't have that, spec points into here to get more Berserking. Um, but you don't need the Berserking duration at all, because we have the Anger Management. We have Marshall, this one also resets you, Call of the Ancients cooldown. And we have Executioner here in the Decimator board for the extra 1.15x. And yeah, this is just a pretty cool setup, uh, very fun to play and still very strong. And I think. Is going to be one of the strongest setups for starting the season with. Um, obviously, you're not going to have this crazy gear yet, but you don't need it because this was already pit 101 and you're only going to be doing like what Nightmare Dungeon 50 or something to level to 100. And you're certainly going to do it with a whirlwind barb, I think, especially when there's more buffs coming to the Tusk Helm. So, spin to win whirlwind is looking good for season 5. I hope you enjoy and uh, I'll definitely be spinning and I'll be winning once the season starts. Let's go! If you like this video, Make sure to subscribe, leave a like or a comment. I'm also live on Twitch almost every day, so come and say hi.